Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Dr. Alan Steven Leica. He is a cosmetic dermatologist, but in the prime of his career, he was diagnosed with ALS and told he had six months to live. That's huge. Well, turns out he actually didn't have ALS at all. He had chronic Lyme disease. So he went on a mission with a doc who helped him to figure out what he had going on and they worked to get him cured. Now, this might sound like a pipe dream to anybody who's ever had Lyme or had, let's put it this way, been diagnosed with Lyme and is still struggling. But it's a fascinating story and it has a lot to do with mindset. Because as much as Lyme can take over your entire body, there is hope for you. And Dr. Likit is one of those folks that is incredible. So I wanted to come on and tell his story, but also just really give his 13 pearls for how to live a fantastic life. So I hope this inspires some folks. And if any of you know anyone that's suffering with chronic Lyme, just not getting answers, listen to this podcast. Let's help you to really just dive into what you can do on the mental health aspect of it because Lyme is so much about where your immune system is at and your mindset has a lot to do with where your immune system is at. Now don't worry, a couple podcasts from now, I'll be talking to a gal who's had Lyme as well and what she's doing to help folks in terms of treatment and therapies and things of that nature. But Dr. Leica focuses on the mindset and he's a fascinating guy. So let's jump into the podcast. Hello there, health junkies. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Kraus. And on today's episode, I'm interviewing Dr. Alan Leica. We're going to be talking about one of these concepts that I think for anyone that is on this earth, <laughs> it's important. And, and really what it is, is it's not what happens to you. It's what you do with what happens. And Dr. Leica has quite a story from back in 2003, and I want him to tell you about it, but let's first introduce him. Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, Dr. Leica. Thank you for having me. It really is a pleasure to be here. I love being on shows like this. Well, we are going to, to get some good insights out of you because, you know, as we talked before we jumped on, your last name is serendipitous for you, Leica meaning happiness in, in more or less in two different languages. And so it seems like this was your calling. This was, this was definitely your calling. So I am looking forward to having folks just really get a really good message from you. So you were diagnosed with ALS and that was in 2003 and here you are today. So tell us a little bit about this diagnosis and, and how it sure. leads into things because sure. so let, let, let me people... go back let me go back to 2003 i was walking with my wife and my youngest daughter at disneyland the happiest place on earth <laughs> and my wife turned to me and she said what's wrong with you hun? i was taken aback you know for once in my life i hadn't done anything wrong i hadn't said anything wrong i hadn't even thunk anything wrong but she persisted what's wrong with you hun? I said, dear, I don't think anything's wrong. She said, listen to your foot. I said, that's the funniest statement you've ever made. She said, well, listen to it. Well, my right foot had suddenly and mysteriously developed a foot drop. Now, your brain is designed, Janine, to be lifting up with every step you're taking. It doesn't flap on the pavement, but mine was slapping on the pavement with every step I was taking. She said, did you have a stroke? I said, dear, you're a doctor, I'm a doctor. If I had a stroke, I'd probably be lying on the pavement right now, muttering something unintelligible. It, it's certainly not that. She said, well, when we get back, you better get it checked out. Okay. Well, Janine, when your significant other says you better get it checked out, what do you do? You do it. Yep. Yeah, you do it. You do it. Cool. So I saw, I first started seeing dozens of doctors and I saw hundreds of doctors. Okay. Yeah. They did brain scans. They did cat scans. They even did scan scans. And you know what they found at the end of the day? 
what? Absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, they thought I had a brain tumor or a slip disc or something that they could pinpoint down to it, but they found nothing. And you know what doctors do when they find nothing? No. What do they do? Tell us. <laughs> they do more tests and more tests and more tests. I think they even invented tests just to do tests back then. But, oh, you know, man. at the end of those tests, a bunch of doctors got together and said, we're going to send you to a neurologist. You know, a neurologist is the brain guy. He's the guy that has all the the pieces to these complex neurological problems. So they sent me to this, this world leading authority. So I walk in and I say, hi. And he says, hi back. You better be sitting down when I tell you this. And I said, why? I've got a dropped right foot. He said, no, you don't. You have ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. Get your affairs in order. You're going to be dead in six months. Well, I was taken aback. I mean, what do you say when a person says you're dying? I, I said, is there a way to prove this diagnosis? He said, of course, on autopsy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I shot back. I'm not going to die to prove you wrong. Okay. But when you go through something like that, you go through the phases of death and dying that Elizabeth Kubler-Ross wrote in her book on death and dying. You go through anger. You know, anger is one of those emotions that you go through and literally need, you know, the only good thing about anger is it motivates you. It keeps you going, but it's not a healthy emotion because you're angry at everybody around you. Everybody knows there's something wrong with you, but you can't tell them because you're dying. And if you tell them, they're going to abandon you. You go through bargaining. Oh God, please don't let this happen. I'll do anything if you don't let this happen. You go through denial and denial is, you know, there's nothing wrong. I certainly have nothing wrong, but you know, my right foot was still flapping on the pavement. My right hand started not working right. Now, as a surgeon, that was a problem because you do a lot of surgery with your right hand, but I was smart. I was able to adapt and become a left-handed surgeon. So I switched over and I could do everything left-handed, but back then there weren't even the tools invented for a left-handed doctor. You know, it's similar to being right-handed, but very different. So you have to invent things. So I invented things. And finally, uh, you go through depression. Have you ever been depressed, Janine? I think I've had some bouts. I really do. I do. Well, bad depression is really awful. I mean, that's when the world is black. That's when you can't sleep, you can't eat. You go through these periods that you just are, everything has no meaning. And, and, you know, I would stay in bed and not want to get out because there's why do anything. I mean, you're going to die anyhow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I got so bad. I even had a plan to kill myself. I wasn't going to die gasping for air. Like I saw in other people with ALS. Um, I went to my wife though. And I said, dear, what do I have? And she said, you know, I have no idea, but she said, you can figure it out. I said, what do you mean I can figure it out? I've seen hundreds of doctors. She said, you're smarter than that. And she said, I don't think you found the right doctor yet. (laughs) Well, that spurred me on. And back in 2003, something brand new was starting to get known. And you might've heard about it. It's called the internet. (laughs) <laughs> you ever hear of that beast uh yep just a yeah bit. well back just in 2003 bit. it was very primitive I, I mean you used to use dial-on connections your phone used to get on a cradle and go ria, 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 for at least 15 minutes on the uh, on a cradle mm-hmm. and finally you'd connect with the phone at the other side And back there, phones had, you know, these computers had no memory. So you had to communicate with a language like DOS or something like that, Mm -hmm. which just gave commands. And, and, you know, the internet back then was very similar to now that it was the best resources in the world, but was full of garbage cans. And you couldn't tell the garbage cans from the great resources. So I was able to navigate it with some friends that were nerds. And I found a doctor in Colorado Springs, Colorado, 
by the name of David Martz. David had a story very similar to mine, but he got worse much more rapidly. Mm. And within weeks of his diagnosis, he was on his deathbed. And a, doctors from around the world were coming around to say goodbye to him. And a doctor from Texas came up, a doctor from Harvey came and looked at David and said, I don't think you have ALS. I don't think you have Lou Gehrig's disease. David whispered, because that's all he could do at that time. He said, what do I have? He said, I think you have chronic Lyme's disease. I think you've been bitten by a tick and it's mimicking ALS. And I think it literally, that's what you've got. Mm -hmm. David said, what do I do? The doctor from Texas said, you don't need to do anything. I'm going to start you on some treatments. And if I'm right, you're going to get better. Well, a miracle happened. David literally was like Lazarus arising mm -hmm. from the dead. And within two weeks, he was back to his literal self. And so David started a clinic helping people with the strange disease. So I called every hospital in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and I got in touch with them at the Methodist hospital. And there we talked and he said, can you come down to see me? I said, when? He said, right now. <laughs> I said, I can't. It's Thanksgiving in Canada. And my wife's invited 50 people over. David said, aren't there any planes in Canada? <laughs> so I went to my wife and I apologized. I said, dear, I'm not going to be here for Thanksgiving. And she said, why? She said, we have all these people coming over. I said, you know, there's a doctor in Colorado Springs that claims he can help me. And he says, I should come down right now. Well, my wife did a 180 degree turn and said, you know, what are you waiting for? Oh, let's <laughs> pack your bags. I'll drive you to the airport. Come on, stop waiting. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So I got on this plane from Edmonton to Denver. It was a great flight, two and a half hours long. Then I got on a plane from Denver to Colorado Springs, which was a rinky dink puddle jumper. <laughs> Have you ever been on a rinky dink puddle jumper? I've been on one from Denver to Vail out to the, the Eagle Vail airport. So yes. <laughs> uh -huh. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And the problem is the air comes off the desert at the end of the day. And that causes turbulence, which causes planes that are flying along to drop suddenly. So the plane I was on would fly along and then drop a hundred feet without warning. It would climb back and then it would drop 200 feet without warning. It would climb back and then it would drop 300. It was like the drop of doom at Disneyland over and over and over again. So I was, I got off the plane off that 15 minute flight and I was green. But there, <laughs> there was David on the tarmac to meet me. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, back then it was okay to do that. He was yeah. a well-known doctor. Uh, he was meeting a well-known doctor, not a big thing, you know, but we talked and we talked for hours and he said, I think history is repeating itself. <laughs> so he started me on treatment and I was able to go through that. But you know, when something like this happens, you wonder, did I do the right things in my life? Did I really live? Did I love? Did I really matter? Did I do things that helped people a lot? So I started to give back to society and I started to sponsor events more than I would. And I sponsored an event called the YWCA Woman of Distinction. And that was held in Edmonton. And a wonderful lady by the name of Harriet Tinka applied for an award. Now, Harriet had a story very similar to mine, but very different. She was a world leading uh, model walking down the cat ropes of New York. And she, she would go to Milan, she'd go to Paris, she'd go to the, but she grew tired of the modeling industry because really it's a dog eat dog breakfast. And she said, I'm not going to do this anymore. So she went to the University of Calgary at Calgary, Alberta, which is just a city south of where I live in Edmonton. And she met a psychopath that ended up kidnapping her, stabbing her and leaving her for dead. She ended up at the hospital and there she met a wonderful young lady 
by the name of Amber, who had a traumatic injury. She was in a car accident where she lost both of her parents and she lost use of her legs, but she was happy as a lark going down the hallway in a wheelchair. And she talked to Harriet and said, what are you here for? And Harriet told her a story and she said, you know, you should be ashamed of yourself. She said, you should be using your story to empower women. Hmm. So then she, she, Harriet applied for this award at this Women of Distinction event, a Turning Point Award, to tell of her turning point in her life. And the reason she had applied for it was not to win the award, but to meet me. She wanted to take me for lunch. And <laughs> of course, I obliged. And she said, Dr. Leica, we should write a book together. And that's where we ended up writing this book called The Secrets to Living a Fantastic Life by Dr. Alan Leica and Harriet Tinker. And it says two survivors share the 13 golden pearls they've discovered. <laughs> and, you know, this is about the 13 golden pearls that we've discovered as a result of our lives. You know, golden pearls actually exist. They exist in the South Pacific and they're made by special oysters. And what causes them is a little grain of sand gets inside of the oyster. And instead of destroying the oyster, the oyster walls it off with this beautiful, precious material called luster. And a single solitary golden pearl from the South Pacific costs upwards of $10,000. So they're very valuable. But the pearls we found inside of people are even more valuable than the pearls we found and that you find in nature. So these are what we found as being important to people's lives. And we put them together in this book so that everybody can share them and really know everything about things. And hopefully people can develop a better life as a result of it. Now, we released that book just at the start of 2020, just at the start of the pandemic. And it became an international best-selling book, which we're very proud of. And that became a podcast for me, which is called How to Live a Fantastic Life, which is now a syndicated radio show with 3 million listeners a month. Wow. Wow. That's impressive. Well, you know, I, people say, how do I do it? The answer is when you've gone through something like I do, you are happy to be alive every day and you're happy to do things every day. So if you're given another opportunity, you better enjoy it. You better really uh, uh, be part of it. And that's what I, I really live for is to help people and to serve people. I help them through speaking at public events. I help to motivate them and I help to do coaching for them. And that's, you know, and I also do my, my podcast and my radio show so that people can really get the message. Every day, I have fantastic guests on it that I love, and it's just a great time. <laughs> you know, that's, I mean, that's the beauty of it is being able to talk to folks and, and really be able to, to use, you know, the interviews to, to carry a message, which, of course, is, is what I'm doing here as well. But, you know, it's, it's, it's special to hear from someone who's been there. And I think there's a lot of folks that might be listening to this podcast that perhaps have a condition that they're not really sure what it is or not really sure where, where to go with it. They just know that they feel awful. What kind of advice would you give to someone who right now they're, they're trying to uncover every stone that they possibly can, and they're trying to figure out what in the heck may be wrong. What kind of advice would you give someone like that? You know, I, I tell people to keep looking. The answer is, it's never too late to ask for a second opinion and, and, and look for second opinions and look for other ways. You know, quite often people have to look outside the box, mm -hmm. you know, inside the box. It's quite often, uh, it's easy to stay there, but you know, there's often answers just outside the box that you're in. And, and you know, if the answers aren't there right now, they are always coming and, and, you know, things keep changing in the medical profession. You know, when I was a cosmetic, when I was a dermatologist, 
one of the, the things we used to dread was melanomas because a lot of times they would be a death sentence. Now we have treatments for that. And, and you know, just recently there has been a treatment announced for ocular melanoma. So we now have things that we didn't have before. So the answer is keep persevering, keep looking, keep trying ask questions. I, I think people have to ask questions. If you don't ask questions, you don't get answers and, and keep looking, you know, and that I think is something that most people need with this it is to look for answers and don't be perturbed if the answers aren't there. You know, Thomas Edison, when he was inventing the light bulb, failed thousands of times on his way to inventing the light bulb. And uh, all he said is, I found another way that didn't work, you know, <laughs> and, 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 you know, I think it was Henry Ford that says, if you think you can't, or you think you can, you're right. <laughs> you know, so, you know, a lot of this has to do with mindset and keeping on reshaping your mindset. And I've always been on the impression that a positive mindset is much better than a negative mindset because it helps you move forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. And of course, that's why I wanted to have you come on the podcast to shed some of that positivity, but also really the concept of, of someone hearing it, listening to this podcast and hearing it from a medical doctor that asking questions are okay, because I think a lot of people will, will set into that, oh, the doxy authority, they, they know more than me. How, how can I even challenge it? How can I even question? And, and it's something that I think it's very important to not leave any stones unturned. When well, look at, look at the doctor I met that told yeah. me I was going to be dead in six months. I mean, he was totally convinced he didn't have any idea of any other answer. Now, in his mind, he was right. And if I had listened to him, it probably would have been right, you know? Mm -hmm. But the answer was, uh, you know, I thought outside the box and I looked outside the box and I found something. You know, in medicine, we always have something when a diagnosis is made called a differential diagnosis, mm -hmm. meaning these are the top 20 guesses on our list of what this could be. And, and it always is said in medicine that if you hear hoofbeats, always think of horses, not zebras. Well, you know, sometimes zebras are there and you've got to be cognizant of the fact that zebras are still there. And so sometimes the hoofbeats do mean zebras and the fact that uh, an educated doctor will always be cognizant of the fact that he could be wrong, you know, and, you know, as a dermatologist, I was always cognizant of the fact that I could be wrong. You know, I always kept looking for answers when things were not doing well, you know, often I would deal with a disease called dermatitis. Now dermatitis <laughs> is bad skin basically, and the skin is itchy and raw. Now, usually there's a cause for that, you know, and sometimes the cause is not self-evident. So you have to look for the cause in it and, and find the cause for it so you can make the skin heal. And, and those are things that an educated doctor aren't always willing to find things and find different ways to do it. And uh, so, you know, it, it, it's an interesting I've always found that life is interesting. I found medicine is interesting. And I've always found also things are not black and white. And that, that is, we always like things that are black and white. It's so much easier that way. But often it's that shade of gray that permeates the whole situation that, that we have to realize that it's not just black and white. And, you know, one of my, uh, when I went to the University of Minnesota to study dermatology, one of my chairmen, uh, Peter Lynch, gave me a great favor. As the first day he was there and I was there, he drew on the blackboard, which we still used mm -hmm. at that time, uh, several boxes in one box inside of a box inside of a box. And he said, he said, the first box, he says, this is what you're going to learn in this residency. And then he said, the box just outside of it, which was bigger. He said, this is what is in the medical journals that are out there. Then he drew a box outside that. And he said, this is the amount of knowledge that is outside of journals. And in, then he drew, he said, 
And he said, the real box you got to be into is the box that is as big as this room, as big as this universe, as big as life. He said, because that really is where the true knowledge is. And, uh, you know, the, the thing is, if you limit yourself to the knowledge that's there, you will never have anything more than the knowledge that's there. And, and that's what I find people are very limited in is that, you know, there's an old um, Hindu story about four blind men looking at an elephant and one looks at the, the foot and says the elephant's like this. Another one looks at the trunk and says the elephant's like this. Another one looks at the tail and says the elephant's like this. And another one comes up against the body and says the elephant's like this. But truly, it's all those things and more that makes an elephant, you know. And, and that's why you have to be cognizant of the fact that the world is different by how you look at it and how you perceive it. So how do you develop an attitude towards life? Well, read a good book. You know, that helps a lot of people do better. And uh, do some things that are different, like watch a, a podcast, uh, go and take a walk in nature, use some quiet time, you know, talk to people, ask questions. You know, all these things are healthy pursuits. You know, they're, they're very important for th- people to move forward. I wouldn't doubt any of them. I mean, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, of course, I'm going to say listen or watch a podcast, but getting outside is one of my favorites. And I think just taking that that moment to reset yourself can can really help stop a negative thought pattern or someone going down a, a, a rabbit hole that maybe they don't necessarily need to in terms of brain thought and brain pattern. Now, of course, you have your book. And you have the podcast and, and you have a coaching program. I want to definitely talk a little bit about that. Does, does your coaching program kind of build off of those pearls, those golden pearls? I'd yes. love to hear maybe a few of those just to give us a little teaser here as uh, to what folks might expect. My coaching program is of two types. One's for corporate programs. So there are golden pearls for business and there are golden pearls for, for uh, individuals. But I'm going to concentrate on the individual uh, people right now because that's what your podcast is for. You know, I have 13 golden pearls and a gold and a bone and an extra golden pearl. So the first one is love. Love is the most, the first golden pearl. And it's the first golden pearl for a reason, because where would we be without love? I I think love is one of the most important motivating factors that we have. And people have to really look at that. And, And I'm going to read something from my book. I believe that dreaming, that dreaming is stronger than reality. Desire is more potent than apathy. Hope is more potent than despair. Joy always triumphs over sorrow. That laughter is the ultimate cure for man's foibles. And I believe that love is stronger than hate. And it's the greatest gift of all. Mm. Okay. That's me quoting myself, by the way. And every one of my chapters starts as a quote. And then there's a little story after it. And then there's the conversation Harriet and I had as we wrote the chapter. So this book is a rather unique little book that way. But love is one of those golden pearls that everybody has to look at and know about. Because that's the fun. You look at a mother with her little baby in her arms and you see that bond that's there and how important that bond is there. I don't think anything transcends that bond. And it, it is truly one of the strongest bonds we will ever have in all the things that we do. But, you know, these are the things people have to look at. These are the pe- things people have to know. And, okay, what are the other golden pearls? Second one is inspiration. Yeah. Inspiration means Inspire is the Latin word meaning from the spirit, the breath of life. You know, all of us need some inspiration every now and then. Mm -hmm. Golden pearl number three is victory. Now, why do I say victory? Because it's the 
opposite of being a victim. And everybody has to take 100% responsibility for their life and seize victory as the thing they should strive towards, not be a victim. Being a victim is something that is something that everybody will feel. Pearl four is vulnerability. Now, how can vulnerability be a pearl? Well, you know, Brené Brown, the high priestess of vulnerability, says so much about it because that's the heart of love. It's the heart of everything. If we allow ourselves to be vulnerable and vulnerability allows us to move forward. Golden pearl number five is purpose or intention. Now, that's a very important one because that's what drives us through a lot of things. And in my book, I talk about a Japanese concept about purpose, which is called ikigai. And ikigai <laughs> is a very, very fundamental one. We could spend hours talking about that. But really, it's, it's summating all the things that people need to in their life. Uh, they need to know the things they love. They need to know the things that they can be paid for, the things that they're good at, and the thing the world needs. And the summation of all those four things is your ikigai, mm -hmm. which is something that a lot of people need in this day and age, because I think a lot of people have lost their ikigai. And to find that, I think, is very important. Pearl six is non-negotiables. Everybody needs a list of non-negotiables, the things that they need to really look at in their lives and never negotiate. Pearl seven is forgiveness. All of us need to forgive others and forgive ourselves. Now, Nelson Mandela once met Billy Clinton and Billy Clinton said, are you angry for those years you were thrown in prison? And Nelson Mandela said something very significant. He said, yes, of course. But he says, if I don't forgive them, I will never be free. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what people need to do. They need to get to that state of forgiveness so they can be free. Number eight is attitude. Having a positive attitude is very important, as we talked about. Pearl nine is thankfulness or gratitude. I think everybody should do acts of gratitude every day, not just be thankful, but acts of gratitude are important. That means doing something for others that you wouldn't regularly do. Mm -hmm. Pearl 10 is tenacity. That's a big one. You got to be tenacious. Without tenacious, you don't get anywhere. <laughs> Pearl 11 is laughter. How about laughing sometimes and being happy sometimes? Pearl 12's enthusiasm. If we have time, I'd love to tell a two minute story about enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Pearl 13 is empowerment. Very important. And the extra golden pearl is fear <laughs> and overcoming fear is a very important. One. That means having the courage to move forward. Yeah. Those are the ones that we put together in our book as the significant ones of people. Now we could have gone on and named 20 or 30 pearls. In fact, our first book had 20 pearls in it, but people said, <laughs> oh, that's too long. That's going to be too much. So we will be writing another book down the road. Once we stop uh, talking about this one and getting this one out to everybody, uh, there is certainly in the, uh, the works for that. But right now, we want to just keep it simple with this. Makes sense. Makes sense. Well, you got to tell us about the, the story about enthusiasm. Okay. I mean, you can't set us up like that and not tell us. Well, it's a beautiful story. And it's about a carpenter by the name of Fred. A carpenter, and he worked for the same company for 45 years. Wow. But he was, he was done. He said, I can't do this any longer. So he went to his boss and said, boss, I'm done. The boss was taken aback. He said, Fred, he said, you're my master carpenter. He said, what am I going to do without you? But he thought about it for a minute. And he said, Fred, can you do just one more thing for me? One more thing. Only you can do it. You're my master carpenter. Only Fred begrudgingly said, yes. And he said, okay, just build me one more house. He said, only you can do it. Why? Because you won't have the skills for it. So Fred did it, but his heart was not into it. He dragged his ass to work every day and he barely got it done. But at the end, a miracle happened. At past inspection, 
So <laughs> he went back to his boss and threw the keys on the boss's desk and said, I'm out of here. Well, the boss said, just hold it. And he gathered everybody in the office and they had champagne and caviar and they had a great big party. And then he said, everybody gather around. He said, this is Fred's last day. I'm so happy for him, but I'm going to be sad because I'm going to miss him here. He said, but he said, you know, Fred, I've got a present for you. He said, here's the keys to the last house you've ever built. May you live in it with all the enthusiasm that you've shown me all the days of your life. Now, the reason why I tell you that, Janine, is enthusiasm is not a Monday thing. It's not a Tuesday thing. It's not a Friday thing. It's something you have to do every day to make that day worthwhile. And that is one of the secrets to success. That's one of the pearls of life. If you can literally bring enthusiasm to every task that's there, you will change that task from an everyday task to a task that's going to be amazing. I like that. I like that. You know, I I think a lot of people do bring enthusiasm to things that they are excited about. I think Friday is a big day for enthusiasm, but being able to, to look at what you can be enthusiastic about Monday through Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, I think that's a huge thing because that brings that, that kind of raises the energetic vibe, right? We, we, we feel better when we're more enthusiastic. For sure. And, you know, I've always tried to be enthusiastic ever since I was told in 2003 that I was going to be dead. You know, it's easier to live every day to the maximum when you, you know, it could be your last day on earth, you know, so you might as well live it to the fullest because you, and really none of us know that tomorrow's going to be there. All we can really do is live for the day. So you better do the best you can with each and every day and do all you can to make it amazing for everybody around you. I I think that's important having everyone around you, making it amazing for everyone else around you too, because of the environment that you're in is, is huge. But now we're going back to a little bit of gratitude as well. And, and so I'm thinking that these principles that you're talking about are part of your coaching program for folks. Yeah, they are. And, and, you know, my coaching program is based on this and what we do, we do two types of coaching. One is individual coaching to help bring everybody to another level. And the other thing I do is uh, I do group coaching where people are in groups of 10 and we go through a golden pearl a week for 13 weeks and we throw in a bonus session at the end to take it all home. And, and those are the things we try to do for everything. And we do in, in group coaching, we do two sessions a month. Uh, so that at the end of six months, you have all these golden pearls firmly integrated in your life. And when we do coaching, we also give you exercises to carry these into your life, little integrated things that will help you make your life a better life as a result of it. Wow. Wow. No, that sounds amazing. It sounds amazing. So, so with the added pearl, it ends up being 14 weeks then. Of yeah, the 14 weeks. So kind of like you can't leave it on the 13th floor. You got to kind of, you know, it, it's interesting. Why did we choose 13? Well, it's a bit of an odd number and, and it's it, going through history. It's actually interesting. 13 in ancient history used to be a lucky number, not an unlucky number. So only in, in modern day have we decided that this number is unlucky. So <laughs> it's true. It's true. So Dr. Leica, just to kind of sum up everything that we've talked about today, what would be one thing that folks can do like right now to live a fantastic life? And then of course, we'll talk about how to get into your coaching. Okay, first of all, remember the principle. It's not what happens to you. It's what you do with what happens. So if you're in a situation that isn't good, take baby steps to get out of it. You know, take baby steps to move forward. You know, if you're playing baseball, you don't have to hit a home run every time you get to the bat. In fact, the big baseball hitters only hit 33% of the time or less. So they strike out more than the So Really, you got to get on first base, second base, third, then home. So if you're using the baseball analogy, that's what you should do. And what what can you do to move your task forward? 
is do three baby steps a day towards your task. That's all you need to do. Now, at the end of a month, that's 90 steps. Wow. <laughs> now, think of that at the end of the year, how many steps that was. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. That's a lot of, that's a lot of math for me right at this moment <laughs> for steps, but that is so many, you know, obviously 365 to get through the whole year, but it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And thinking of, of, of taking it in little bites, like the 90 days, you know, moving forward from there. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, this is, this is good stuff for folks. So, so folks can find you, of course, you've got your, your podcast and you've got your radio syndicated show. I saw on your website where folks can tune in and, and what radio stations they can look at. So guys, if you want to listen to Dr. Laika's uh, radio show or the podcast head over to let's see we've got the coaching is at erlyca.com so that's how you spell Leica. yeah it's dr like a dr dot er oh, er somehow i have turned you into an emergency room department yeah so, doctor well, dr like so the, the, my website is dr dr Leica, l-y-c-k-a and there's an alan in between there so dr alan com. Okay. D-R-A-L-L-E-N, Leica, L-Y-C-K-A.com. If you would like coaching, go to coaching with Dr. Leica.com. Okay. All right. Well, we will put those notes, guys, over at drjkrausnd.com. So all the podcast notes will be over there. And we'll get I'll get it spelled correctly since instead of E-R, D-R. Yikes. Slip of the finger there. And, and we'll <laughs> go from there. All right, Dr. Lega, thank you so much for coming on the Health Fix podcast and sharing all of those 13 pearls and the bonuses with us. Well, Janine, it really is my pleasure to be on shows like this. This is my way of helping to give back and help make the world a bit better a place. That's the goal. That is the goal here. That's what it's all about. Thanks again. Hey, Health Junkies, I love to help active athletic women rebalance their hormones as they're going through perimenopause. And so I created a masterclass to share what I've learned in the last 15 years about balancing hormones. And now that I'm in that realm, I also am sharing what I've found myself that really messed with me as I started into this hormone transition. And so if you're curious about what those things are, I have a masterclass just for you. So head over to defyagingformula.com forward slash webinar dash registration. Check it out. Let me know what you think. And hey, if you think we might be a good fit to work together, I am game for that. Let's talk about that too. All right. Give me your feedback. I do honestly want to know what you think about the webinar and I'm looking for questions all the time, podcast guests, all those things. So let me know what you're interested in and let's see if we can make it happen. Hey, fellow health junkie. Thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review.